By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between a deck made by Robert. It's mono black. It's called Lord of the Skies. And it's got three Lord of the Pits. It's really awesome. It's got three Fallen Angels. I'm really looking forward to do the deck deck for this one and to play against his deck because it just it, it just looks like a lot of fun. And I'm playing this deck with my green and blue Timmy's Plane deck. So that's a deck built around Living Plane and Prodigal Sorcerer. Now, before I start with the deck deck section, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also choose to watch the games first or just skip the whole deck deck section if you want to. The easiest way to do this is check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on MTG Games, boom, and you're at the action. Also, if you want to know more about the specific rule sets or like more information about the channel, check the description below. And if you still have any questions, always feel free to leave a comment, you know, or a question, and I'll check it out for you. For now, we are going to continue with the deck deck, and I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Lord of the Skies. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Robert, and as you can see, it's completely mono black with artifacts as well. And I'm just instantly drawn to those three beautiful Lord of the Pits in the middle of this deck photo. So I think we should just start here because that's basically what most of the rest of the deck is built around. Um, so Lord of the Pit, maybe just zoom into the card. It's a 7-7 seven, seven for 7. I love that. Uh, it's got flying, it's a summon demon, it's got trample, and I think that's super cool. Don't underestimate the trample. And then, of course, like so many big creatures in old school, it's got a downside, right? Because it would just be crazy to have a 7-7 seven, seven trample flyer for 7. So the downside is, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature other than Lord of the Pit. If you can't, Lord of the Pit deals 7 damage to you. So it's not a choice. You have to sacrifice a creature to the Lord. Only if you don't have any other creatures than Lord of the Pit, you take 7 damage. It is kind of nice to note here that the Lord doesn't tap itself. So you just take 7, but then you can still attack with it. And remember, it is a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler. And when we look at the rest of the deck, there, there's a playset in this deck that I find flavorful and very interesting with Lord of the Pit, and that is Howl from Beyond. Now, first off, Lord of the Pit obviously comes from Beyond, so it makes complete sense from a flavor sense. And Howl from Beyond is one black and X, and for that X, you can give it plus X plus zero, and it's an instant. So he can attack with Lord of the Pit, even if he doesn't have any creatures, right? He could just take seven, attack with Lord of the Pit, keep, keep all his mana untapped, play Howl from Beyond at the right time, and because of that trample ability, it can almost work like a Berserk, right? So he can just deal, I don't know, an insane amount of damage, like 14 damage in, in, in one attack, you know? And that's just awesome. That, that would be such a cool way to win. I'm hoping, Robert, that you can actually, that you beat me with the Lord of the Pit Howl from Beyond. That would just be insane. Now, um, because Lord of the Pit requires a sacrifice, I think a lot of cards in his deck are kind of steered towards making sure that there's a creature to sack to the Lord of the Pit. And I think the most interesting here uh, card that does that is Cormus Bell. So Cormus Bell is an artifact and it makes all your swamps into 1-1 one, one black creatures. Uh, and they're still swamps, you can still tap them for mana, but they're also 1-1 one, one black creatures. So he can then sack a swamp to the Lord of the Pit. So it kind of gets an upkeep of Sack of Swamp, which is not so bad because when you cast Lord of the Pit, it's probably pretty late game, unless of course you've used, well, one of the Dark Rituals that's in his deck as well. But let's assume he doesn't, that he's hard casting it later in the game. Then it's actually not really a problem to Sack some of your Swamps to the Lord of the Pit. Now there's one other creature here that loves to eat creatures and that is actually the Fallen Angel. And Fallen Angel to me, it's a really interesting card. It's from Legends. It's two black and three to cast for a 3-3 three, three flyer. And it's kind of the black Atok, right? In the sense that with Atok, you can sacrifice an artifact and it gets a bonus. With Fallen Angel, you sacrifice a creature to get a bonus. And the bonus is plus two, plus one. So it's already a 3-3 three, three flyer, which is actually pretty good. Flying is really good evasion in old school. And for you sack one creature, it becomes a 5-4. Now, that's a pretty big monster. Unfortunately, it doesn't have trample, but still. And of course, you can sacrifice uh, multiple creatures to it. So you can make it really big. So if you can find one perfect moment in the game where you can kind of swing in and you can sack a lot of creatures, you know, bam, you, you could just kill your, your opponent on the spot. And talking about that, you know, sacking a lot of creatures, he's playing with three Tetravuses. And Tetravus is it's really interesting because it creates creatures for you, right? It's a 1-1 flyer for 6, 
with three plus one plus one counters on it. And during your upkeep, you can take a plus one plus one counter off for a little tetravite. And, you know, those tetravites, you can then, of course, sack to your fallen angel or your lord of the pit. So it's quite interesting. And you could also sack the tetravite itself, then get it back with raise dead or animate dead, make even more counters. So you can kind of create a loop with those cards. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. So um, this is the deck of Robert. There are many more cards in this deck to talk about. For example, Black Mana Battery, fantastic art by Anson Maddox. So cool to see it in a deck. But you know what? I'm kind of going to keep it short here. If you want, you can pause. If you've got any questions about the deck, feel free to post them. I'm sure Robert will watch this video too and, and he'll be happy to answer them for you. So this is the deck of Robert and now we're going to take a look at my deck, Timmy's Plane. And this is the deck that I'm playing with today. It's called Timmy's Plane. And this is actually not the deck itself, but just a few key cards of the deck. Unfortunately, I don't have a deck photo at the moment and the deck is not together right now. So it was difficult for me to kind of make a deck photo. So I've decided to just show you some of the key cards and, and this iteration of Timmy's Plane, because I'm still tweaking on it, I'm still working on it. This iteration really uh, revolved hev heavily around Sylvan Library, Untamed Wild, Simbad. So I just wanted to take you know, ultimate advantage of my Sylvan libraries. So I'm playing with three Sylvans in this deck. And, you know, Sylvan, of course, is card from, from Legends, one green and one to cast for an enchantment. And it allows you to look at the top three cards, you know, during your draw step, put them in any order, and then you draw your card for turn. And if you want to, you can also pay for life, draw an extra card, and you can do that for two extra cards max. So you can pay eight lives, and then you will draw all the three cards that you've seen with Sylvan Library. Now, the cool thing is, it, this combos off really well with Simbad. Simbad, of course, uh, I can tap it to draw a card. And if it's a land card, I can keep it. If it's not a land card, I have to discard it, right? So with Sylvan Library, I can make sure that there's always a land card on the top. Now, what if the cards on top of the Sylvan are just not really good? In that case, I can play Untamed Wilds. Untamed Wilds, another card from Legends, one green and two to cast. And you can search your library for a basic land, put that into play untapped, right? And then shuffle your library. And that shuffle effect is actually quite valuable because if you have a Sylvan in play, you kind of know what cards you're shuffling away. And the next turn, you get to see three fresh cards. You know, one of the problems with Sylvan is usually um, at a certain point, you know what cards are coming and you know that they're not going to save you when you're under pressure, right? Or you know they're not going to help you move forward. So that can be really annoying. And then you have to make a choice. Am I going to pay life to get out of this situation? Uh, but I'm already under pressure by my opponent, or am I going to hope that that one extra card that I get to see is going to be the right one? Well, with with Untamed Wilds or any other shuffle effect, you kind of reset that button and you can look at three brand new cards again. And because of that Untamed Wild, um, I want to cast that as fast as possible. So that's all, also why uh, Lanora Elves are going to be really, really helpful. Now, uh, the deck is called Timmy's Plane for an obvious reason. In this deck, I play with four Prodigal Sorcerers, four Tims, and also play with three Living Planes. So Living Plane is kind of what the deck is built around, right? It's an Enchant World from Legends, two green and two to cast, and it reads, treat all land in play as both lands and 1-1 one -one creatures. They may not be tapped for mana the first turn they are brought into play. Why not? Because they've got Summoning Sickness. So the cool thing is here, I can use my Prodigal Sorcerer once Living Plane hits the board to kind of ping the lands of my opponent because they're now 1-1 one -one creatures. And with Prodigal Sorcerer, I can deal one damage to any player or creature. So I can start killing his lands. And even cooler, I'm also playing with Old Man of the Sea. Uh, I can tap and use my Old Man of the Sea to actually gain control of the land, of a land of my opponent. So, that, I mean, that's just a lot of fun. So I, I really look forward to kind of doing that. Um, I'm also playing with Diamond Valley, by the way. So in theory, I could steal one of his lands, sack that to the Diamond Valley, and then next turn steal another land. So then I'm kind of gaining life and destroying the land of my opponent that would be that would just be really funny talking about destroying lands there is a card that's really good with living plane that's not on this picture and that's triskelion so Tris triskelion is six to cast right for a one one with three plus one plus one counter so it's a four four but those counters i can shoot off the triskelion to deal one damage to any player or any creature so if I've got Living Plane on board and I cast a Triskelion, I can use the three counters to kill three lands. So it's basically six mana to destroy three lands and you also have a 1-1 one, one left as well. So it's just insane value. So I think Trike and Living Plane, it's a sick combo. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to pull that off, but especially I'm hoping to kind of use my old man of the seat, just steal lands from my opponent. It just, 
I mean, it's just funny, right? Don't you agree? Just so those are just things I'm looking forward to. Anyway, um, this is kind of my deck, so I hope you now have kind of an idea of what I want to do. Uh, now let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. So the mono black player at the top here, Robert. I'm at the bottom. He's starting with a Willow the Wisp. And let's look at that. A Soul Ring from my part. And okay, there's a Mox Sapphire. I am playing a power deck. I didn't mention that in the deck in the deck deck. There's a second swamp and a pass and step and so recall. Wow, what a start for me here. Getting three cards and having that ramp up with the soaring and the sapphire. Let's see if I can do something with that. Tapping three. Will we see an untamed wilds? Oh, an old man of the sea. So I could actually steal that willow. Not sure if it's very useful, but it is kind of funny. And now it's difficult, of course, for Robert, because, for example, if he would play an Hypnotic Spectre, I can simply steal it with the Old Man of the Sea. So that's probably something he's not going to do. He has to make some decisions, just passing turn here. Let's see what I can do. I've got a lot of mana. I've got cards because of that Ancestral Recall. So it's really looking like a great start for me. But I need certain pieces in my hand. I don't have the double green to possibly cast a Living Plane, for example. There's a Basil Monolith by Robert, and I'm deciding to steal the Willow, not having a better target. Probably a better option would have been to just, um, you know, keep the Willow on the side of Robert and maybe even attack with the old man because he doesn't have any mana to regenerate the Willow after casting the Basil Monolith. Okay, and here we see an Energy Flux. That's kind of interesting because I also have two artifacts on the board. Probably a little afraid of what he wants to do with that three extra mana. And passing turn here. Just remember, we don't, of course, see each other's decks before we start playing. So we don't know what the other person is going to bring to the table. Here we see a mana battery. That is pretty interesting. Because that energy flux is on the table. So that may not be the best decision to make here. I wonder why he decided to play the Mana Battery. It is really cool, by the way, to see Black Mana Battery uh, actually in a game of Magic. That's been a while. Beautiful art by Anson Maddox. So using the Soul Ring to pay for itself, letting my Mox Sapphire die. I've got four lands here open, so four mana available. And with that Tropical Island, I do have my double green now. There's a Pendlehaven. Do I have a Living Plane in hand? I could cast Living Plane. I could start stealing stuff. I am casting a Living Plane here. So that means that all the lands in play are now 1-1 one, one creatures. And I've got, of course, that Pendlehaven, so I can pump my 1-1s one, to 2-3s. Two, the Basil Monolith, of course, doesn't untap. You have to pay 3 to untap it. And now we're in the upkeep of Robert, and he has to decide what to do, because that Energy Flux is still on the table. Energy Flux says that you have to pay 2 per artifact, or else it gets destroyed. So it's his upkeep cost per artifact and it's, it must be really annoying here for Robert because you know he's got the mana battery okay so let's look at that so he's using his mana battery and the upkeep to kind of untap the basil monolith and he's letting the mana battery go kind of an, an, a difficult spot here for Robert also when you think of mono black there are not a lot of things that you can do against enchantments and uh, I'm giving back the Will of the Wisp. Probably going to take a land from him. So I'm going to tap three. Look at that. A Psy Blast on one of the lands. And drawing for turn. You're letting my Soul Ring die, by the way, because I've used that two mana to cast a Psy Blast. Tapping four. Casting a Control Magic. Okay, so I'm really trying to attack his mana base here. Really going for his lands. Control Magic on a Swamp. Stealing a Swamp with Old Man of the Sea. And then hopefully next turn I can kind of trample over him with my lance. Remember, I do have that Pendlehaven so I can pump my lance to two, three creatures. Which is actually really good with Living Plane. And yeah, he's using the mana from the Bezel Monolith to actually pay for that upkeep cost of two from the, uh, from the Energy Flux. And there's not much that Robert can do here. It's... Um, yeah, I've, I, it looks like I've got this game in the bag. I'm probably going to just attack here with my Lance. That's exactly what I'm doing. So attacking with 
two of the swamps owned by Robert himself and four other lands. And he's blocking one, regenerating. I'm pumping another one. So how much damage is that? That's five damage, I believe. So he's going to take five damage. And then we pass turn here. Oh, actually six damage because one of those swamps, of course, we can't really see. That's the one with Old Man of the Sea. So it's going to take six in total. Going to go down to 14. I'm not really sure, you know, what Robert can do here. Only having one land, one willow. And we see that he had to let go of the Basil Monolith here. And yeah, he's, he's passing turn. Keeping my old man tapped. And, uh, oh, playing a prodigal sorcerer to Timmy. And that's really good news for me. That means I can start shooting down his lance. Attacking here again. So he's going to block one. I'm going to pump one. So he's going to take some more damage. Going to go down to 10. Playing a diamond valley. So now I've got that combination on the board where I can steal a land with diamond uh, with old man of the sea. And then I can sacrifice it to diamond valley because it's now a creature. And I can actually gain one life. And uh, the reason why I'm not doing it yet is because my Diamond Valley still has Summoning Sickness. So now I'm untapping everything. My Diamond Valley doesn't have Summoning Sickness anymore. I'm using my Timmy to ping here. Oh man, this is kind of insane. And of course, Robert is making a Regeneration Shield and I'm attacking. And I'm going to pump one and he's going to go down to four. I'm going to play an Island and pass turn. Deciding not to attack with the Diamond Valley, probably just want to keep it open. On his end step, deciding to eat one of his swamps so I can steal, of course, the new one. And it's really cool to kind of see this combo working. And yeah, I mean, Robert is saying, okay, man, you've got this. <laughs> I, I have to be honest, Robert, I appreciate the fact that you let me continue and let me play and let me try out the deck. Um, like I said, this is a pretty new deck. So it's always fun to kind of play a full game, even though you're, you know, e even though I'm winning that you let me kind of play my game out and test everything out. So thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, it looks like we're going to go into our sideboards and we'll catch back up with this game in, uh, in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's Robert probably on the play here after losing that first one. And it looks like he's taking a mulligan here. That is unfortunate. I really hope to see more of Robert's deck. Um, I mean, I guess when we look think back of, of game number one, I just had an insane opener there with, with Mox Sapphire, Soul Ring, Into Ancestral Recall, you know, drawing extra cards. Of course, you're going to find the pieces you need to actually get your, your combo together uh, in, in my Living Plane deck. And I think as soon as I had uh, Old Man of the Sea out with Living Plane out, and of course, that Energy Flux to really kind of mess with with his artifact mana I, I was kind of golden you know the game was pretty much set i have to say for me it's really cool to see that uh diamond valley old man of the sea living plane synergy going on i mean that's pretty funky um you know that's a first for me but uh yeah besides that i'm hoping that game one will be a little bit more exciting and we'll see robert here going through his hand here deciding what he wants to do with it. Is he going to keep, right? That's the first question he has to ask himself. And then, the, yeah, then the next one, which card am I going to put on the bottom? So he's chosen the card. We're off to start your basic swamp and pass turn. There's a Lunderer Elf from my side. And there is a second swamp. And as you can see, he's like keeping track of the amount of cards in hand, which is kind of nice. I, I should probably do the same. There we see a Sylvan Library. So again, a pretty good start for me. There's a Hypnotic Spectre. That is kind of nice for Robert. If the Hypnotic Spectre can stick, I mean, there's not a lot of removal in my deck. You know, I've got Control Magic. I've got um, two Psyblasts, I believe. So there's not that much. There's a Simbat, so it looks like I don't have a solution. Of course, Simbat Sylvan Library is really nice. It really works together well. If I can find lands, I can put them back on the top of my library and use my Simbat. So it looks like I'm going to lose a card here. So he's going to throw away some dice. <laughs> okay, and now uh, this card's going to go. It's a Crumble. And then he's going to cast a Pestilence. Oh, that's so good against this board. 
Wow, that is impressive. So next turn he can use the Pestilence for one and can kill everything I have on board except for my Sylvan then. But I'm going to lose all my creatures. That means this is the only turn I can kind of use that Simbat Sylvan synergy. Well, at least it gives me one card, although I'm going to lose more cards to the Hypnotic Spectre. Hypnotic Spectre is really a difficult card for me to, to deal with, I realize now. And playing a City of Brass. A, whoa, again, finding Ancestral Recall. That's kind of sick. Game one, we saw that very, very early in the game, and now we're seeing it again. That's just very unlucky here, Robert. And doing a regrowth, casting my recall again. Wow, I'm drawing so many extra cards here. The question is, am I finding what I'm looking for? Actually deciding to attack here with Simbat and passing turn. Wow, this is kind of crazy. What a crazy game so far. And there's the attack again. So as you can see, I now have, what, seven cards in hand? And he's going to throw the dice. I'm going to lose card number two, going to lose my Timmy. And actually, the Timmy is not that useful right now because of that Pestilence. That Pestilence is, is a big problem for me. That is a huge game changer. He's going to swipe the board. Remember, Living Plane and Pestilence is great when you control both. But when your opponent has Pestilence, it's an absolute nightmare. And I, I think the biggest chance for me is to try to get rid of the Hippie so that the Pestilence destroys itself at the end of the turn because there are no creatures in play. So hopefully I can find a Psyblast playing a Tropical Island passing turn again. Wow. And that Hypnotic Spectre is really doing work. And look at my life total here. I'm on nine. I can't believe I'm that low already. There's a Fallen Angel. There's an attack. Going to lose a card here. And let's see, what card am I going to lose? Going to lose a Triskelion. Oh, that is painful. Next turn, I could have cast a trike. It looks like I'm, I'm, I'm showing that as well. And then I could have killed the Hypnotic Spectre at least. Then he still would have had the Fallen Angel to deal with, which is a huge problem because it's a 3-3 flyer. But still, I need a Control Magic on the Fallen Angel here. Side Blast, but I'm going to deal two to myself as well. I'm going to go to five. Next turn to two, and he can kill me with the Pestilence. I'm dead. I'm dead, showing my cards and letting Frank play and kind of explaining my decision making here. And there is a, oh, Lord of the Pit. I do get that. He wants to play the Lord. He wants to play the Lord. So I'm going to go to two. Okay, man, I appreciate that. I really do. I understand you want to play the Lord of the Pit. And uh, it is so cool to see the Lord. And I'm just casting my ass off here just for funsies because basically I'm dead already. So, um... Yeah, he's going to eat the Fallen Angel with Lord of the Pit, which is, again, really on flavor, and he's going to win. I'm so happy, Robert, that we have this game to win. I think Pestilence, it is huge against my deck. It is absolutely huge. So I'm a little bit shaky now. After game one, I was very confident, but after seeing this, who knows who's going to win this? Let's, uh, let's find out and go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. And so far, we've seen two pretty amazing games, if I say so myself, and... I have to say, man, that game two, that Pestilence, man, and then killing me with the Lord of the Pit, that is style. And this, don't don't forget, um, I've casted two Ancestral Recalls in that game number number two, right? So it's not like I was drawing bad or anything. I found that I had that Lanawar Elves turn one. I had the uh, Sylvan Library pretty quickly on the field and everything. But I just said Pestilence kind of ruined all of my plans and then, you know, finishing it off the Lord. That is classy. But let's see uh, who's going to actually win this match. So it's 1-1. One, one. That probably means that I'm going to start here. And let's see, is Robert going to take a mulligan, yes or no? It looks like he's going to keep. I'm going to take a mulligan here. Okay. That is new. So shuffling up. And um, yeah, I mean, that Pestilence, that's going to that's gonna make my strategy a little tricky. Living playing Pestilence is actually something that people play. And uh, putting a card on the bottom here, so deciding to keep this one. Opening with six cards, and there's a Soul Ring turn one, so that's pretty good. But only five cards left in hand. There's a Willow by Robert, so the same play as in game uh, number one from him. There is a Prodigal Sorcerer, so that's actually kind of nice. That means that Robert, if he wants the Willow to stick around, he's got to keep one black open. There's a Mana Vault. And of course, he wants to, um, you know... 
get his mana rocks out and quickly play. Ooh, this is good. A crumble there on the mana vault. And quickly wants to play like his bigger creatures. And there is a Lanawer Elves and a Simbat. And my hand's empty. So just a lot of 1-1s one in my deck, actually. And uh, deciding to deal 1 damage to Willow in his upkeep. Why? Then Robert has to choose if he wants to use his mana to regenerate. So just a way to put some, some pressure on his mana base. That he has to make some tough decisions. And uh, he's playing a second Willow here. And there's the attack by Simbat and Lanawer Elves. I'm able to deal some damage at least. And it looks like I'm... Okay, and then I'm, I'm also killing the other Willow because he regenerated the other one. Okay, I see. So I was able to kill one. Ooh, there's my arch enemy again. Hypnotic Spectre. We saw Hypnotic Spectre being really, really strong in that in that first game. There is another Protocol Source turn. That's actually perfect. That means that next turn I can kill his Hypnotic Spectre unless... And you see me praying here hoping that my... Timmy's will survive. There's a terror on one of them, so the answer is no, not both at least. Taking two damage from the Hypnotic Spectre, going to untap again, playing out a land, attacking for two is going to drop to 15, so right now I'm doing a little bit more damage than he's doing, and it looks like he's kind of stuck in land. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to ping him for one, it's going to drop to 14. And if I can just find a trike, I, I am playing with a couple of trikes in this deck. Not sure if there are two or three. Ooh, interesting. Playing Living Plane. And of course I'm playing Living Plane because I have um, because I have a Protocol Sorcerer. And you see me using the Timmy straight away, killing off one of his lands. So he only has two lands left. And I'm just attacking with four right now. And he's letting it all go. He's going to go down to ten. My reasoning is, you know what? If you choose to block and, and trade your land for land, I'm actually... You know, I want to do it because, ooh, nice Howl from Beyond. That's nice flavor-wise. And look at that, milling away one of my own Timmies here with that Simbat. Trying to find some extra lands because extra lands are extra troopers. And now I can shoot off his other land. So he goes to one land. Control Magic. So, okay, wants to give his land. I assume I'm going to steal the Hippie, right? I am not. Okay, wow. I'm really, like, wanting to control this match. I guess it's a better option because I'm still on 13. And if he has no lands, remember, he does play with a full playset of Dark Rituals. So you don't want to give him that that one out where maybe he has Dark Ritual and he can ritual into something. And I don't know. You know, he can do something valuable and worthwhile. Look at that. He had a Pestilence in hand, though. So this game could have gone very bad for me as well, you know, as soon as Pestilence hits the board, I kind of feel like my whole strategy is out of the window, but um, I managed to uh, to win this one, and I really want to thank Robert, uh, it's just really cool, the deck you brought to the table, it's just fantastic, and, and they were fun games, and I would love to see some more of the Lord of the Skies actually here on the channel, let me know if you'd like to see some more of Robert's deck as well, and I kind of you know, make it happen. We'll play some more games with different decks and stuff. And Because I think the deck, we haven't seen it working on full cylinders yet. And I really want to see that. Um, yeah, that's it. This is today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if, if you liked what you see and if you like the content that I make, please uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, you're very welcome. And also leave a like. That really helps. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment as well. All that stuff really helps making this YouTube channel grow and be even more successful talking about that you can also support the channel financially and you can do that by becoming a patron via patreon there's probably a card popping up right now if you click on that info card it'll take you to the timmy talks patreon page where you can basically find all the info on how you can support this channel and it already starts with one dollar a month so it's it's kind of cheap and the cool thing is you get access to the timmy talks discord I organize special events for my channel members and patrons just to thank them for their support and also your name. What what about my name? Well, your name can be on my end scroll at the end of every video. How cool is that? Talking about all that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks.
Think it is, think it is, somebody can see. 